Hi and welcome to a short tutorial on document objects. With document objects we mean all design items that you may have in your project. That can be user needs, requirements, test cases or whatever. In this particular configuration I have something we call user need and I'm going to navigate to them by clicking them in the product explorer. And the user need displays and if you want to open up an individual user need you can click on the title then it opens up on the right hand side in a separate pane or you can click on the id or just hover on the id first and then you will see a quick view of it or click on the id and you would navigate and see the document object in full and you can of course also use the arrows in your browser to navigate back and forward between the different views that you just had open. Now, so we're back to the user need. We have it displayed neatly on the right hand side and we can have a look that it includes an ID. And in this particular example, the ID is user need one. It has uh, another field or attribute as we call it that's called disabled and this one is not disabled we'll see what we can do with disabling and enabling in a separate little uh, tutorial and then it has a title and the title is the text that is uh, being displayed in every list within aligned elements so if we look at intended user here that's the text that we see on the left hand side as well when all the user needs are listed but furthermore we also have some additional attributes and here we have something uh, that we call description and we have something called applicable to. So a uh, user need can of course be edited by the system. So I click on the edit button and we get a message that it's currently under review. That's fine. Uh, we're gonna do reviews in a separate tutorial. I'm just gonna click okay and continue editing. And I can now change the title and maybe do an uh, addition in the description here. Some more description. Now, we also see that the formats of these entry fields are different for these attributes. The title, you can only add text for the description. You can um, add text, of course, but we also have a lot of formatting options. So I could, for example, set clinical to bold if I want to do that. I can also add images or tables and, and all sorts of things like bulleted lists or numbered lists. And for the last um, attribute here, we have a multi-select possibility. So I'm just going to deselect the, the operator and just keep the patient. So I will save this change now. And when I save something, a little gap form displays and tells me what I modified and ask me to write a little comment about what I just did. And now if you think it's cumbersome to write a comment every time you have to do a change, um, you will get used to it extremely quickly. And if not, you can just have a look at the last history of used comments. So I'm just going to pick one of those. And I, I'm also able to extend that one if, if I want to. And I will click OK. And it saves. And we can see something now that next to the ID here, we have a number two. And this number two is actually the revision of the object and we can click at the revisions down here in the detail view and see that we have now two revisions one done a while back and one done by me just now in the tutorial and down in the bottom we also have a number of other tabs that we can look at so we can see that this one is including the snapshots snapshots are defined in a separate tutorial uh, together with reviews and as we edited this object, we also saw that this was part of a red view because the system told us so. So this is an open red view that's gone on and the changes that we're doing now are actually going to be part of that red view. 
And one of the most important tabs here, I would say, is the inconsistency tab. This is where the system helps us to, to keep track of any formal inconsistencies according to our quality management system. So if we look at this in a bit more detail, we can see that the system is expecting us to do a particular tracing. And further down the trace tree, we have a trace missing to a verification test case. And this is over basically a chain of traces. So this user need apparently traces to design input requirement number two, which in turn uh, traces to design output number one. And that one is lacking a verification test case. And here you can actually learn a lot about how your documentation sticks together and what, what's still to do in the system. So inconsistencies is the go-to place to figure out if we're actually done with our documentation work. Now we have additional uh, tabs here as well. Uh, one is called tags. That's an additional grouping function. It's also going to be explained in a separate tutorial. Uh, signatures, because the system can also keep track of electronic signatures. And then we have the tracing parts where we have trace from, which should list objects tracing to this user need. So incoming traces, you can say as well. And then we have a trace to, and that's listing the objects that we are tracing to from this user need. So user need one is tracing to design input requirement one, two, and validation test case one. And now, there's another tab called attachments and here we have the possibility of in a similar way that you maintain attachments for emails we can attach them to singular document objects and of course we also have a built-in management system for issues and here we have one issue listed for this particular user need and if you have a look at at, at this that its status closed then it's actually been taken care of. If it would not have been closed, it would have been listed as part of the inconsistencies as well, saying that we have an issue attached to this user need and uh, we need to work on that sooner or later. And for, for um, possibility of actually keeping track of comments and inputs that are of informal nature, we also have a comment section for these 